Hey everybody, RC here from Kelby One. I just wanted to take a second here to do a quick video. Every now and again when I'm sitting at home, I'm going through my Facebook posts and I'm doing all sorts of just post Photoshop work. And I get, I make sure that I'm on Facebook, I make sure that I'm Google Plus, and every now and again I try to get just a couple moments to answer a question that's online. And Jason Reese had asked me a question on actions and automation and he had a specific problem he's got a job he's trying to finish and he wanted me to kind of go through something so i figured you know what rather than just kind of me type out you know, the entire answer i figured i'd make a video we'd post it on youtube and then you guys can use it so basically what the question was this if you have a, pic a whole bunch of pictures and i just got them all set up here right he basically was telling me that he has a whole bunch of pictures and those pictures are of different sizes and are of different things. Some are landscape, some are portrait. And what he wants to do is he wants to get them together to do a web portfolio. In order to do that, he needed to be able to take different types of pictures and he needed to be able to resize them to 72 DPI. And he's got hundreds of pictures and he doesn't want to do a file, save as, file, close. So I told him, you know, why not do an action? Right? Actions are pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and do them and you can batch them and they've been around in Photoshop forever. Here I have a series of pictures and I'm just going to open up one of these pictures here just to show you. And if you take a look at the size of the picture, you go to image, you go to image size, it's 240 DPI, right? So they're really, really big pictures. So what I want to do here is I want to create an action that's going to resize those to 72 DPI, right? So I'm going to go to window, I'm going to go to actions and under the actions, you'll see that you have a whole bunch of actions already set up here for you. A lot of the times I usually tell people just create your own set of actions so that you have them available. So hitting the folder, you can make your own set and you can save them there. Now from here, I'm going to go down here to the new icon. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to make a new one. I'm going to call it convert to 72 DPI. You can assign a function key. You can assign a color to it. It doesn't really matter. At this point, I'm just going to hit record. Once I hit record, you'll see that it, there's a record button right there. And that record button that we have there is going to record everything that you do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file open. I'm going to go to that folder. I'm going to click on open. And now from here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on image and image size. In this one section where it's 240 DPI, I'll go ahead and I'll click on 72. Now, once I have that set as 72 DPI, I can go ahead and I can say, well, I want to resize it and save it to a specific size that's here. Or you can go ahead and specify it here. Now, in his case, all he wanted to do was convert it to 72 pixels per inch. So all that's all I'm going to do here. If you wanted to put a specific size, you could, right? If you leave this blank, Let's say that if I just change this one to 1500 width, all it would do is it would make sure that everything that I did here was 1500 in width. If I change the height, let's say that I made that to 1500, all it would have done there is it would have changed the height. Now, I just want to change it to 72. Here's a little tip. If you're inside any box inside of Photoshop, if you see a cancel, if you hold on the option or the alt key on a PC, it turns it into a reset You can click on that and it brings you right back to the beginning here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this to 72. Once I have that set, I'm going to click OK. It does the conversion for you. If you take a look here and go to image size, it's 72 pixels per inch. Now, once I've done that, you'll see that it opened the file. That's one step. Second step is it converted to 72. That's all it did. Now, from there, I'm going to click on File, Save As. I'm going to go to my desktop, and I'm going to make a new folder for all of this stuff. I'll just call it Finished, and I'll save it in there. I'm also going to set a compression. Now, he said I was going to put it for the web, so I'm just going to leave it at 7. Click OK. See that it saves that command there. Then I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Close. Open, Convert to 72, Save, Close. I'm going to hit Stop. Now. If you go over here to the finish section, you'll see that this file now is smaller than the file that you had when you started, right? 5.2 megabytes versus 625 kilobytes. Now, once we have that set, what I want to do in the finish folder is I want to make sure that I delete that because when I run a batch action against it, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to take this file, try to save it in the finished, and it'll turn around and go, wait a minute, do you want to overwrite? 
And you don't want to be there to do that. You just want to let it happen automatically. So you did it for that one action just so that you can get kind of the template set up. At this point, you can just go ahead and delete the file. Once you've done that, I'll go inside of Photoshop and inside of Photoshop, I'll click on file, automate, batch. And inside of here, you'll see that it has the last one that I had selected there, the RC action set and the convert 70 PPI. The source is going to be a folder and I'm going to choose the folder that I want. In this case, the start folder. That's where he has all of the images. That's where I have all of the images that I'm going to do here as an example. I click on choose. From here, I want to override the action open command, right? So basically it's saying is instead of open that one specific file, use whatever it is that you're saying here for the source. There's no subfolders. I'm going to leave that. If you have color management set up, chances are you're probably going to want to suppress file open and color profile warnings. File open would be something like if you open up a PDF and it says, well, what page do you want? Page one, page two, how, what's the resolution that you want? So you want to override all of that stuff. Under the destination, you could save it in the same file. I would recommend that you save it in a different folder. That way, if you mess up, you only have to do is delete that folder. So what folder are we saving it to? The finished. Inside of there now, you want to override the save as command, right? So this folder could have been very, very different than the folder that you're asking it to be saved now. And you also have the option to be able to rename it if you want right here. You can add an extension, you can add, you know, like if I wanted to make a document name so that I know that they're web files, I would probably do something like this. I would change this and instead of having it be the extension, I would just come over here and I would type in underscore web and it shows you the example. And then in this drop down, I would set extension in lowercase. Now that I have all of that stuff set, I just click on okay and it should go to this file open resize close into this file using this naming extension click ok opens one opens the next one opens the next one opens the next one opens the next one and it'll just go through all of those examples once it finishes all of that stuff you should see all of those results down here in this new go here go to the desktop go to finished there's all of the examples, all set to the 72 DPI size. Again, if you want to take it further and you want to make them smaller width or height, you can get and take it even further by just writing that into the action. Now, if you want to be able to see more of this kind of stuff, right, I would recommend you go to Kelby one. That's where I work. That's where I do all of the, you know, Photoshop training and all of that kind of stuff. Take a look at it. You'd be surprised. There's tons of information that's there. If you want to follow me online, make sure that you go to facebook.com slash photo RC. If you follow me on Google Plus, you can go to gplusrc.com.